Coming up this morning on Daybreak, one man arrested and a woman on the run after a police chase in Tallahassee. We've got the details. Plus, state groups along with community members gathered to discuss how a local woman died in police custody. And time is running out to make tax-deductible donations for 2015. Some tips on checking out charities and making it count. Plus, meteorologist Ricky Beatty is in this morning with a check of your New Year's Eve forecast. Live from the WCTV studios, this is Eyewitness News Daybreak. Coverage you can count on. Good morning to you. Thanks for waking up with us on this Thursday morning. And yes, we are on the eve of a new year. And so uh, lots of people wanting to get out there and celebrate tonight. Brittany, how's the weather going to play along? Well, unfortunately, the weather doesn't seem to be cooperating mm. too much. Even this morning, a few areas of rainfall. And if you're not dealing with that rainfall, still lots of fog out there. And of course, a lot of cloud cover. And we're not the only ones getting in on that rain. That's continuing through the southeastern United States, along with our next cold front. Now, of course, before we get to those cooler conditions, we have to deal with the rain first. And even some areas of moderate to heavy rainfall are already falling. A little bit further to the west, so it's, only, it's not going to help our uh, local rivers, and we're also under a flash flood watch in a few counties highlighted by green, most of those closer to Panama City, but it does include Bainbridge, Georgia, and all the way up into uh, Baker County and as well. So still a few of our South Georgia counties under that flash flood watch until 1 p.m. today, so something we are going to keep an eye on along with the river levels out in the Flint River and also the Apalachicola River, a couple of flood warnings set to expire during the day on Saturday. Saturday or during the evening on Saturday rather. But like I mentioned, still dealing with that rainfall. Most of our South Georgia County is already receiving that rain. Scattered showers for the most part. Liberty County starting to see a little more of a moderate to heavy rainfall move through. So if you are heading out this morning, Grab the rain gear, be ready for some rain, and also be ready for some fog out there. Add a little more time on your morning commute if you're heading out today. We are down to three miles visibility in Tallahassee, a half mile visibility down in Perry. So still slow down and use those low beam headlights. Temperature is still off to a warm and muggy start in the 70s for most locations through North Florida and South Georgia, just in part due to that cloud cover. Those clouds are going to stick around through the rest of the day today as well, from the morning all the way into the afternoon, and along with that, those rain chances remain on the board as well. We'll take a full look at the forecast along with that New Year's Eve forecast coming up in just a few minutes. For now, Shonda, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Brittany. Well, Tallahassee police are currently searching for a female involved in a police chase yesterday evening. Well, they were able to arrest the driver who allegedly crashed a stolen car. That car was reported stolen four days ago. Its owner saw the suspect driving it yesterday. Well, police followed the car to Pine Street where driver Rashad Long reached a dead end. Police say that he backed up, hit three cars, two of them police cars, and then sped off. Officers chased him to Clark Avenue and Seminole Drive where he crashed. Police say Long and a passenger tried to run away. Long was caught. The female passenger was not. She's described as black, about five foot six and wearing a plaid shirt. If you have any information, call Tallahassee Police. New this morning, Reverend R.B. Holmes, president of the Tallahassee chapter of the National Action Network, has issued a request to Bluntstown's police chief to release dash cam video and the death of Barbara Dawson. 57-year-old Dawson died last week after being arrested for refusing to leave the Calhoun Liberty Hospital. Well, Reverend Holmes said in a statement, quote, I'm calling upon Chief Mark Mallory, chief of police, Bluntstown, Florida, to immediately turn over all dash cameras or videos that are available in reference to the unfortunate death of Barbara Dawson. Well, he goes on to say, I've made, uh, uh, I have actually been informed that the family attorney have actually asked for the video in the spirit of transparency and unity. If the request has been made by the proper parties, he says, we feel this request must be granted. Meanwhile, dozens packed at St. Stephen's AME Church in Bristol last night. It was to discuss the death of 57-year-old Barbara Dawson. The NAACP hosted a town hall meeting about how the group will help Dawson's family find justice for their loved one. NAACP leaders are saying if Dawson was white, that she would have been treated better. Chris Groh has more. Based on what we've seen in the past, it, it boils back down to race. It falls back down to race. Local leaders of the NAACP continue to call for action after the death of 57-year-old Barbara Dawson. At a town hall meeting Wednesday night, the group disclosed it will be asking the FBI and Department of Justice to look into the case. Were she white, do you think that her treatment would have been any different? I believe we believe it would have been different. We truly do. I wish history would change. I, wish, I mean, I'm sorry. I wish the pattern would change. 
but we haven't seen that. The FDLE is currently investigating the case, and so is the state's Agency for Healthcare Administration. An autopsy says Dawson died of a blood clot in her lung. She begged and she pleaded, I'm sick. You're killing me. You're killing me. I'm sick. Let me say. No. You got to do it. Walk out, or we're going to carry you out. In days after Dawson's death, the hospital CEO said the condition is both hard to diagnose and treat. Both the CEO and Bluntstown Police Chief Mark Mallory vowed earlier this We're week to be fully transparent. Well, Landry also called for the release of dash cam video from the day of the arrest. So far, it has not been released to the public. Dawson's funeral will be this Saturday. A circuit judge makes a ruling in the redistricting case for Florida's Senate seats. Judge George Reynolds selected a map submitted by a coalition of voting rights groups. His ruling stated that the map submitted by the legislature favored the Republican Party and incumbents. The Senate will now have to randomize the new 40 district numbers. The map still needs to be approved by the state's Supreme Court. A Tallahassee teacher accused of failing to report child abuse has been sentenced. Sunshine Jacobs will serve two years probation and 250 hours of community service. Now Jacobs taught here at the Magnolia School on West Tharp Street. Prosecutors say that she and two other teachers did not report abuse claimed by a 12-year-old student. Kathleen McGlynn has already been sentenced to three years probation and 200 hours of community service. Sharon McQueen is set to appear in court next year. A Wakulla County woman is behind bars accused of trying to kill her 62-year-old mother. Deputies arrested 39-year-old Deborah Sterling Tuesday. They responded to a domestic disturbance call at a home on South Springwood Boulevard. Well, Sterling allegedly stabbed her mom, Donetta, several times during an argument. She's currently in stable condition. Deborah is charged with attempted murder. Many of you are probably getting emails and letters from different charities encouraging you to make a last minute tax deductible donation. Well, there are just a few of the emails right here that landed in our inbox here at WCTV. Well, consumer advocates say that there are a few things to keep in mind before you write that check. I love a rainy night. Music therapists with Big Ben Hospice visit more than 900 patients a year. The head of its foundation says end of year donations are a huge percentage of its gifts and are critical to making sure programs like musical therapy continue. Who brightened today? Elder Care Services has already received nearly four dozen year end donations. The torch is amazing. And the director of Special Olympics says she checks the mailbox every day. Florida's Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services says most charities are required to register with the state, and its website allows folks to see how agencies spend that money, too. And they can see how much money goes to program and services versus management and fundraising. CPA Spencer Ingram says if folks want to write those donations off on their taxes, they should log on to the IRS website to make sure the charity of their choice is a 501c3, and then be sure to keep documentation. If you were to be challenged by the IRS, you want to have the cancel check, you want to have some type of proof that you, in fact, uh, made this charitable contribution when you did it. Time is running out to make those tax deductible donations for 2015. Nonprofits like Second Harvest often count on the influx of year end donations to cover expenses well into the new year. We have put links on our website to both the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Gifts Givers Guide, and the IRS website's exempt organization search. Well, more flooding is expected in our area, and people in Gaston County are staying clear of floodwaters near the Apalachicola River. The RV park and campground in Chattahoochee, as you can see here, has flooded. Well, in some spots there, the water is several feet deep. Officials have also closed a few roads in town. Well, city employees and police officers are also checking flooded areas. They're telling people about any potential flooding problems. The city manager says so far he's only seen minor damage, but we do know that a uh, we're not done with the rain just yet, right, Brittany? Yes, yeah, some more rain is on the way, so of course we're monitoring those river levels, but also we're monitoring a flash flood watch. In effect, for some of our counties as well, just due to all this rainfall moving through. And that rain could lead to some delays. Right now, the average delay at some of our area airports looking good so far, but a look at our radar I'll show, especially around Atlanta, expect some delays for traveling those regions. We'll have a full look at the forecast locally coming up in just a few minutes.